So hello everyone, this video is going to be about giant mechs and how they're used in anime. Specifically, the anime recreators that I think really uses mecha quite well, especially the main mecha in the series that I would say is Gigas Machina. There are, it's debatable because there's uh, another mech in the series, Vogel Chevalier, from one of the main characters. But Gigas definitely plays a giant part and dev definitely leaves a lasting impression on everyone that watches the show and likes Mecha. Because when you watch another series like Gundam or Code Geass or something, you'll see maybe the Double uh, O deflecting projectiles in episode 1 of season 2 of Gundam Double O. Or you'll see the Lancelot Albion coming to life right near the end of Code Geass R2 and wrecking everyone. Or you'll see maybe the Unicorn Gundam versus the, the Kshatriya for the first time in Gundam Unicorn. And it gives you this really euphoric moment where you're just like, okay, this is fantastic. What am I even watching? You know, you get tingles down your spine, or at least I do, because it just, it looks amazing. But then eventually that satisfaction or that sense of euphoria and shock just at how awesome this thing is that you're looking at. That goes away after a while because you get used to how the mechs react and how, especially like with Gundam, the titular mechs normally dominate like crazy. So you get used to how awesome they are. And normally, if it's any exception to that, it's normally, say, one or two episodes where you have something fantastic. So say, like, for instance, with Unicorn, you have it at the very beginning versus the Kshatriya, and then you have it maybe at the very end versus the Neo Zeong. And like with Double O, you have it when you see the Double O movie and you see the Quanta just using its giant beam saber to carve the ELS moon. And those are just examples of places where you think, okay, this is fantastic again. This is really cool. And it gives you those feelings back. But Gigas, Gigas from Recreators gives you that sense of wow, every single time and sends shivers down your spine and i say this because of how it's used gigas is a giant mech it's 55 meters it's a walking building think pacific rim style and it has a lot of heft to it it is really heavy as well so you can't just sort of jump around with it like they could do in the second pacific rim film it's a very very big and heavy thing and this is established throughout the series where it gets dropped into different interactions but every time it appears almost everything stops now normally you don't see that with gundam a gundam appears people get frightened by it because of its reputation and then things continue but gigas gigas stops everything in episode four the face-off versus the jsdf the JSDF does nothing and Gigas does nothing apart from look at them and stops the battle completely just by doing that as both sides decide to call it and have a ceasefire. Then in one of the other episodes, I think it's episode 7, it's dropped in at the end of a fight where all the main characters are fighting against each other in sort of like a brawl. And the last resort is dropping Gigas into the battlefield because of how much of an impact it has. And as a result, everybody just decides, yeah, I'm not fighting that thing and just runs. Bearing in mind, in episode 7, Gigas is dropped into one of the Japanese waterways. And the water out of the waterway sprays all over the road and everywhere else. Then in episode 10, you have it referenced at one point where Gigas is holding... Uh, a circling pattern above Tokyo because again there's another b battle royale going on but the main antagonist of the series Altair is basically attacking everybody all of the good guys and winning terribly to the point where they're all gonna die so the last option is to drop Gigas into the battlefield and you can kind of see where I'm coming from now where Gigas is used as a last line of defense and something that you shouldn't just sort of turn around and be like, oh, we'll just throw it at him and see what happens. Purely because it's treated almost like a weapon of mass destruction. You do not use this thing lightly. 
So in episode 10, they drop it into the battlefield and it doesn't even land because in Tokyo, what happens is Altair clones Gigas. So you end up with these two giant mechs brawling in the sky and the entire thing just to watch is fantastic. Just them going at each other with lasers and fists. A load of great sound effects go along with this just to make it even better. But then later on, we don't see too much of Gigas because of the character arc that the pilot has. And we only really see it in the final parts of the second arc, which is episodes 17 and onwards. And Gigas then becomes this main influential fighting force where it takes the front line and is immediately posing a major threat to the bad guys with one of the other mechs in the series, Vogel Chevalier. And basically you have it firing lasers all over the place, destroying a load of stuff. And even taking on other mechs and smashing the living daylights out of them. Sure enough, it does take a beating. But at the end of the day, it manages to go home after saving the world. And... It leaves one hell of an impact. It, they even tease model kits of this thing in the series, which I wish they had, because I would drop so much money on one of these things at this point. It is fantastic to watch, and it's neat to see that a mech is held back in reserve. The creators of the show themselves said that they didn't want it to be all about the mechs, specifically because of the way that the power levels are structured. So, like with the, the previous other mech that I referenced, Vogel Chevalier, it's a lot smaller and more nimble. But the character that drives it also has magical powers, so instead they focus on the pilot more than the mech for the majority of the two arcs, or the two seasons, up until episode 17. And this kind of also gives you an idea of how they're treating the mechs in general, because at the beginning you see mechs, it's a cool fight sequence like any other show, but then that is immediately taken away and you're left with the pilot just trying to deal with things while fighting as a pilot, which is something I'm not used to. You don't normally see like somebody get taken out of a Gundam and then for like half or three quarters of the season be out of the Gundam. You know, it's almost unheard of. But then you feel the weight of the episode 17 and the impact that this has when Vogel Chevalier comes back into the season where it gets resurrected it gets uh, brought back into the same universe that all the other characters are in through a magic spell and this again sets this whole thing up in terms of how recreators does mechs that it's reserved but when they're used it's fantastic to see them and it feels like they have way more weight than anything that i've seen so far sure enough the story for recreators isn't amazing but there are definitely some really good things in it to check out. So, if you liked hearing about this, definitely check out Recreators. It's an Amazon exclusive, but you can find it on other streaming websites. It's a little bit funny in that people find it a little bit awkward to get into because it's a bit slow with the narrative. And it's a little bit heavy on the exposition at times. But I think that's down to the character that actually delivers the exposition. But I'll save that for maybe another video. Anyway, until next time, bye!